Hello again and welcome to the second video in this session on land administration as a system. I'm Dr. Simon Hull and I invite you to join me as we discuss land policy and land management as components of a land administration system. In this figure we are depicting the land administration system with land policy at the top of a pyramid. We placed it at the top of the pyramid because all other elements depend on policies that show what a country's priorities are and how policies reflect a country's understanding of how humans should use and manage land. Land policy states the strategies and objectives for the social, economic and environmental use of land. And as such, it directs everything about land. It embodies the country's vision for how land is to be understood, governed and managed. And this visit vision should filter through all levels of government. Land policy must be cognizant of the processes of managing the use and development of land resources in both urban and rural settings. This entails a set of laws and regulations as well as an organizational structure to enable the goals and plans to be carried out. Land policy is expressed through a myriad laws, regulations, budgets, departmental white papers, administrative structures, etc. and in provincial, municipal and local level plans. A synthesis of policy is usually expressed in the country's national development plan. And in South Africa, all land policies and laws are subject to the national constitution. In their book, Cadastre, Principles and Practice, Fisher and Whistle define land policy as a complex of socio-economic and legal prescriptions that dictate how the land and benefits from the land are to be allocated, managed and administered. You see, land policy is the big picture and everything else that concerns land should fit under its wings. It contains the vision for how land is managed and should set out the legal and regulatory framework for realizing this vision. In a country like South Africa, a big part of that vision is land reform, which we will discuss in later sessions. Land access and control are associated with wealth and poverty. Hence, land policy should address poverty and inequality issues. At the policy level, there should thus be concerns about food production and distribution systems, including marine resources, investment policies, and economic development. Economic development is, however, often equated with commercialization and promoted above social needs and purposes. Policy should consider the complex and varied understanding of land that includes access control and uh, access and control by the poor, as we discussed in the first session. Land issues have deep impacts on people's lives and the way they interrelate are complex. There are no quick fix solutions. Good land policies should clearly identify priorities regarding how land is to be accessed and used and how the benefits from land are to be shared. This makes land policy highly political and contentious because allocations of access and use of land involves choices about the distribution of benefits from one of the country's main assets, which is land. There are thus always trade-offs with winners and losers. These realities mean that land issues potentially sow conflict at all levels of society. Land policies should thus foresee potentially conflicting situations and provide for institutions that manage conflict. The next level in the pyramid over there is the management level, and which refers to society's oversight role, largely but not only through government. Land management is about the strategies that are put in place to ensure that policies are implemented according to their expressed priorities. It is often used interchangeably with land administration, but is in fact a different level of regulation. As illustrated, land administration is the blue level, land management is the green level, and land policy, obviously, the, the yellow level at the top. Management is the strategic level, because at this level, the strategies for implementing policy are set. 
Administration, on the other hand, implies executing the tasks. To use an everyday example, in any large company, you would have the boss or CEO and his or her board who set the vision for what the company does. Each department in the company may have a manager who decides how that vision will be realized in their particular department and sets associated goals or objectives. She or he is supported by an administrator who puts the manager's goals into financed activities to be performed by the workers or professionals under the manager. The management level concerns the objectives for realizing the vision of the policy and is broader than administration. The management level permits certain actions to happen and restricts certain actions from being done. It is thus both permissive and preventative. Good land management requires coordination between all the departmental functions and sectors. It requires interdisciplinary approaches and expertise because the processes of drawing up rules and ensuring they are carried out involves political, technical and social issues. With the advent of land markets, urbanization and environmental challenges, both land management and administration are increasingly subject to planning processes. In the book Land Administration for Sustainable Development, Williamson and others present a land management paradigm developed in 2005 by Stig Enemark and Jude Wallace. The paradigm suggests that land policy on the left, land information on the right, and country-specific institutional arrangements at the bottom provide inputs into the four land administration functions in the middle namely land tenure, land value, land use, and land development. These functions, along with institutional arrangements, must all perform in the interests of sustainable economic, social, and environmental development, which is at the top of the diagram. Thus, the function of land administration is to draw on land policy and land information to enable land administration, which is the doing part, to achieve its functions. Join us for the third video in this session where we take a closer look at land administration, its functions and how to achieve something called responsible land administration.